Welcome everyone, Bo Hashem. It's a huge, huge privilege every time that holy souls are coming with pure intention to learn and to come closer to Hashem and to work on themselves and showing by that the pure intentions of them. Only that amazing thing of coming together and joining is making such a big difference in heaven. And I will try to tell you some things that are very, very important and I hope you will have the vessels to understand, to receive and to take it to a good place, to a right place of work of real effort on finding Hashem and understanding His will. It is true that in those days that we're, we're seeing, we're experiencing, big things are happening in heaven in those days, in those hours. People can recognize that and see that because of judgments and because of, of pain and sorrow, wars, threatens. There are a lot of things that are going on in this world today. But more than that, people that have sensitivity, that have a heart, they can feel also inside their own bodies with their own souls that big things are happening. There is only one kind of war that goes on in the world and it's the war of darkness to block the light. That's the only war that there is. And we can see that many of the people are automatically much in a, in a much easier way are connecting themselves to the darkness than to the light. In a situation of a struggle a person finds it much easier to be upset and angry than to be relaxed and calm and positive. It's, it is much easier to decide to stay in bed for another hour than to push yourself out of bed one hour earlier. So the nature of sadness and depression to lose hope and to be angry is a nature that is very close to people. It's very easy for people to choose that path, to go in that way and to be depressed and to give up and to lose hope and not to count on Hashem. It's much harder for people to throw themselves after Hashem and to count on Him. But the thing is that that darkness is like a pill that covers the fruit. It's true that the first experience that you have with an apple or with an orange or with a watermelon, it's their pill. It's true, it's closer to you. You're first going to meet the pill and then you're going to think how to remove it, how to take it off, how to bite it, to go through it into the fruit that you desire, that you wish to have. So it is true that first of all you find that darkness. But the darkness, even though that it's closer to you, that pill, that covering is closer to you, it doesn't mean that that is the main part of the fruit. The fact that it's closer to you doesn't make it more important and more powerful in your life than the fruit itself. So it's true that we are dealing with the difficulties that we are dealing with the laziness, with the sadness, with the depression, with the lack of hope, with the lack of faith. And it's much easier for us to meet that, to be upset, to be sad, to fall to sadness. But it's not who that we really are. 
inside of ourselves there is that holy soul that is shining through those pills, through that every crack that it just finds to go through. And a person that experiences some spiritual experience, immediately his memory is start pulling him back to the holy source, to the roots of his soul. Many Baalei Tshuva, people that decided to attach themselves to Hashem, to the Creator, to Father in Heaven, to the Torah, it started with one spiritual experience. One time they were very, very happy, there was a big celebration, or that they were confronting death, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's not important if it was a good experience or bad. Just the fact that they've been exposed to a huge amount of light, or terrifying, blinding, blinding light, or just very pleasant and, and very amazing, satisfying light, gave them that opportunity to remember the existence of that light, and from that day and on, to desire to come closer to it as much as they can. So after one time that he found himself in a horrible car accident, or that he was too high in a party, it doesn't matter, but from that day and on, that picture that he saw, that he saw that light, that he saw that there is something beyond, that memory is not moving from his eyes. And in every other situation, it, that memory is coming up again and reminding him there is a purpose, there is something going on, there is amazing things that are hidden from your eyes. You must remind yourself, you must continue, you must do another spiritual thing. And that is a very important message for us. Who are we? We are those ones that care about others. We are those ones that wants to help other people. So for us, it's very important to remember that after that you help the person to remember even just once, that there is a Creator, that Father in Heaven, He loves Him, and you proved it to Him. You shown it to Him even once in His lifetime. You should be confident, 100% sure, that in the end, in the future, that person will do tshuva. That person will come closer to Hashem. To do tshuva is to bring yourself back to Hashem. To bring yourself back to Hashem, it means to remember Him. Because He is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So we just need to wake up people to call Him even once. Even once. So for an example, if a person is coming to you and he will talk to you about football for hours, he can talk about the Super Bowl and the final league, and he is 100% inside Super Bowl and football, and he cannot see beyond that. There are people in that place. They cannot. That and beer. That's it. <laughs> That's what he can talk about. That's it. Super Bowl, football, and beer. That's it. That's what he's able. Okay, so great. How are you going to wake him up? Tell him, listen, I saw an amazing class. I heard the class on YouTube. You know? He doesn't watch those things on YouTube. He doesn't care. No, I've been to a great shiu. You must come. Chavuat Ahavat Israel. You don't... Nothing. You don't talk to him because he doesn't understand that language at all. That funny kippah that you have on your head is already too weird for him, but he is okay. He's patient with you. He can... Okay, he will let you be who that you are as long as you're going to let him be who that he is. So, how are you going to help that person? While he's talking to you about the football, about the game, so ask him which team you're a fan of, or that you can tell already by his shirt, whatever. And in that place you can give him an advice that will fit to his place. Tell him, tell me, do you really like your team? Do you really want them to win the Super Bowl this year? Yes. So, if you love them so much, are you praying for their success? Do you pray that your team will win? That they're going to win the Super Bowl? You gave him now an opportunity to express his faith. To be a believer 
in that place in his life. To change him and to take him to Shul, to take him to Beit Midrash, to take him to the synagogue. Hey, let's pray. Shacharit, Mincha, Ma'ilim. You cannot. He's not into it. It doesn't speak to him. But his team, it's the center of his life. It's uh, for him, it's, it, you don't know what it represents in his life. For him it's unity, for him it's friendship, for him it's love, for him it's success, for him it's excitement, for him it's amazing things that are happening in the world. So you need to go to his place and not to criticize him, just to give him a lifeline to offer him something that will speak to him that will give him a way to connect to the Creator from his place. And there is a connection. There is a connection from every place in the universe that from that place you can connect yourself to Hashem. And that place always and always and always will be called in the name prayer, tefillah. Because the only thing that a person can do in every situation is to pray. Even in the lowest places of them all, you can call Hashem. Because even if your mouth is closed, you can also call Hashem from your heart. You can scream from your soul. Even if someone is forcing you to do something against your will, he cannot stop you from wanting Hashem. To want Hashem, to love Hashem, and to call Hashem, this is something that no one can stop you. They can stop you from putting tefillin. They can stop you from keeping Shabbat. They can stop you from eating kosher. They can stop you from every mitzvah except of one, faith. And the way to express your faith is in prayer. So that's why they cannot, no evil inclination, no darkness, no dark power can stop the person from counting on Hashem and calling Him in prayer. And that's why the verse is saying that even if a sharp sword is threatening him to cut his throat, he cannot allow himself, he cannot stop himself from asking for mercy. Because even on his deathbed, even in a situation that he's threatened on his life, he's about to be killed. To call Hashem is possible, is an option. It's something that you can do. So that is the best guiding to give a person that you want to offer him something. Okay, connect yourself to Hashem. You can talk to him about putting tefillin. It will not going to speak to him. This is something else. For him it can be foreign. But to express his own will to the power that moves the universe, and you don't have to call it in names. He, do, he doesn't have to, for an example, he doesn't have to call Hashem in his name Hashem. He can talk to the universe. He can call the energy, the one love that is above. He can, it doesn't matter. I met a person once that converted to Judaism. And that person had a very hard question in his mind. For years, he believed in Jesus. And he thought that Jesus is the one that you need to pray to. And one day he woke up. And he realized that to pray for a person, for a man, to redeem you, to save you, is not the right way. And he decided to convert to Judaism and to believe only in one God. So he found it very hard that he remembers that while he was still non-Jew, he was praying to Jesus and he saw miracles. He saw wonders. And he had that question, how can it be? I was praying to Jesus, and now I don't believe in Jesus. I believe that it's not the truth. I believe you should pray only to one God. Wonderful. Now, how can it be? And I remember the miracles that I had, he is telling. How can it be that when I was calling Jesus, he helped me? I don't know what to say. <laughs> and it's a great question. But the answer is very simple. Hashem in Barach, he's got that thing that he is humble. And Hashem Barach, he doesn't care how you call him. I promise to you that when the animals call him, they don't know his name. I promise to you that they're just expressing their sorrow and it's enough for him to hear their prayer and to answer. And he is answering. Why he is answering? Because he's got compassion. Because he's got love to all of his creations. 
So if now there is a person that decides to call God Muhammad, Jesus, Allah, God, Lord, Ganesh, Shiva, Buddha, I don't care, I don't mind. Hashem in Barach, he doesn't really care as long as your intention is aimed to heaven. If you're really calling him and he recognizes that you called him, he doesn't care. He wants you happy. He wants you to succeed. Another proof and evidence for that is that the Rambam is saying, it's written in the Ayad HaChazaka, Rambam is explaining on both of the main religions in the world today, Islam and Christianity. And the Rambam is explaining that even though that the Mashiach that they are following is a false Mashiach, is not the real Mashiach of truth that we're expecting him to come, still there is something very good, very important in those two religions. What? And that thing is a preparation for the real Mashiach to come and to reveal himself, to, 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 to uncover, that Hashem will uncover him, will show his light through that Mashiach of truth. And what is that good thing? That both of those religions been learned, they learned to follow a Mashiach, to follow one leader. Tell the Christians now that Mashiach came, they will check, they will see, oh, he's Jewish. They won't mind. Why they won't mind? Because they're used to it. They will say that it's Jesus. They will call him Jesus. Other people will call him Muhammad. It doesn't matter. In the end of the day, they are qualified in a way to follow Mashiach. Because they already had one in their mind, and they believe in him, and they're ready to die for him, and they don't mind to follow him from one side of the universe to the end. Why? Because they've been educated for generations to follow one leader. So it's cool for them, it's good for them, it's easy. We have the problem. Muslims, they don't have no problem. Christians, they don't have no problem. We have a problem. What's going to happen if Mashiach will be Ashkenazi, what all the Sfaradim going to do? <laughs> if Mashiach will be Sfaradi, what Ashkenazim going to do? We're in a problem. If Mashiach will be a breast lever, if Mashiach will be a breast lever Hasid, so what all of the Chabadnikim will do? If the Mashiach will be from Chabad, so what all of the breast levers will do? If Mashiach will be Litvish, what all the Hasidim will do? If Mashiach will be Yemenite from Gedera in Israel, what, what are we going to do? How are we going to accept the face of Mashiach? Well, Mashiach is Moroccan from Bet Shemesh. What are you going to do? From Bet Shean. What are you going to do? <laughs> so we're the ones, we're the ones that that in trouble. So we are the one that, that have a very hard case. So everyone needs to prepare themselves for that moment that Mashiach will reveal himself in the world. And the only way that a person will be ready to accept the face of Mashiach is if that person will be wise. And what it means to be wise the Mishnah is asking, who is a wise person? Ezehu Chacham, Alomed Mikol Adam. It's a person that is ready to learn from everyone. From every human being, he is ready to learn. Only a person like that can accept the face of Mashiach. Because it's a guarantee that when Mashiach will come, Mashiach will come in a way that will be hidden from the eyes of people. Mashiach will come when people will not be ready. After Mashiach will reveal himself, people will say, what? He was here already and we didn't recognize him, we didn't know that it was him. It might be that you already met Mashiach and you don't know that you spoke with him. It might be your next door neighbor, it might be your best friend and you don't know that it's him. Because Hashem Barach is making such amazing things in his world to hide and to cover and to protect Mashiach 
that people were not going to hurt him because of the anger, because of jealousy, because of all bad attributes that people have, they can hurt the real Mashiach. And Hashem wants to protect him and to bring him to that position that from that position he will be able to work and to succeed and to accomplish what that Hashem wants him to accomplish. So until that day, Hashem must hide him from the eyes of the world. So even us, we cannot recognize him. You can look at the mirror and not to know that you're Mashiach even. Are you sure that for sure Mashiach will know that he's Mashiach? Do you have any knowledge for sure that you saw a verse that is saying that Mashiach will know in the beginning of his life, in the middle of his life, that he's Mashiach? I think that for sure that he will be humble enough not to think that there is any way in the world that he can be Mashiach. Like that Moshe. Moshe, the Zara Kadosh, is calling Moshe Mashiach. That Moshe, he was the Mashiach of that generation. That he is our Mashiach, the Zara Kadosh is saying. So, when Hashem Barach called Moshe and told him, okay, in that first amazing prophecy of Hashem in the burning bush, Hashem is calling Moshe and tells him, listen, my son, I want you to go and set my people free. I want you to take them to the Holy Land. For a whole week, seven days and seven nights, Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing with Hashem and bringing proofs and evidence to the fact that he, Moshe, is not worthy, not qualified for the job. A whole week the Gemara is explaining and bringing some of the claims from the, from the opinions of Moshe, arguing with Hashem. I'm not the one, I'm not worthy, here take Aaron, my brother, do this, do that, all the options, everyone else except of him. Why? Because he was humble. In the end, Hashem told him, listen, be quiet, do your job, go. And that's it. So Moshe was humble and went and did. No problem. But only because Hashem told him to go. So Mashiach put him in that test. For sure he will say, no, I'm, for sure I'm not the right one. The humility of the righteous ones is so huge that it's holding them back from redeeming us. But Hashem in Barach, he's got his own plans, and he's got his own will, and he's preparing the world for the redemption, and he also brings Mashiach from the back door to bring him into the right point, right position, in the right time, when all the world will be ready to receive and to accept Mashiach, and the redemption to come, and the salvation for the wide world, but Mashiach himself will not going to know that. So if he himself cannot recognize himself, and he himself is not so sure if it's him or if it's his best friend, or his teacher, or his rabbi, so for sure that you cannot recognize him as well. So if you cannot recognize him, the only way that you have to find him, to accept him in the end, is only if you as a person will have that love and that respect and that honor for every human being, for every person. Only if you will be with that attitude, with that approach that you love and that you care and that you accept and that you look for the wisdom in every person and you're ready to learn from everyone. Only because that you understand that you are unique. But the fact that you're unique is not making that person to be less important than you or not as good as you. Because you can be unique and also your friend can be unique. And the fact that he is amazing and important and great doesn't take from your greatness, doesn't take away from your beauty, from your greatness. Who that Hashem made you is a unique individual, very special individual, and also Hashem made your friend. And both of you are one in the world. There is no one more than you except of you. He made you to be only one, unique in the world. And there is no one else like you, but also there is no one else like your friend. There is no one else like the rest of the people in the world. And only a person that will have that kind of respect and that kind of wisdom to be ready to learn from every person. And like the Mishnah is saying, I learned from all of my rabbis, all of my teachers, they taught me a lot. But my students, they taught me more than anyone else. How can it be? 
How can it be that a rabbi then sat and learned for years and years and years, tens of years, from righteous people from the old generations, right? He's standing between, in the middle, between the old generations to the young generation. Now, the young generations, they never saw the old generation. And he's the only one, that big teacher. And he experienced a huge life experience, met so many holy, righteous people from the old generation. And he helped them. He was their helper. He came, was with a lot of respect with them. He was running with them. Okay, so now he's been qualified to be a rabbi. And he's coming and telling you, most of my wisdom I achieved from my students. Those guys, what are you talking about? How can it be? The answer is also simple. Your students are putting you in a very, very <coughs> awkward, embarrassing position. With what? Through what? Their simplicity. They just want to know. They just have questions. And they're coming with their huge questions that are shaking the stability of your faith as a rabbi. They're coming and questioning questions on Hashem and they're doubting the Torah because of their lack of wisdom. Because of their, that's how they hold themselves. They are humble and they think that they don't know anything. And they're coming with their doubts. Okay, so how can it be that this? And how can you say that Hashem is mercy? And how can you say that the Torah is truth? And they're going to question and question and question and question. And who need to deal with all of those questions? Questions that never crossed his own mind. Because he was innocent. He saw those giants, those huge righteous people. And he followed them. Okay, great. Amazing. He learned how to walk in the path of purity, how to be holy, how to deal with light. Great. He lived all of his life in the right side. But then he receives with his students the opportunity to deal with darkness, with the weakness, with the judgments, with all kinds of difficulties that are making the person question and doubt the faith, doubt the truth of the Torah. So now when those students are coming to that rabbi and offering their questions, they're making him think. They're challenging his own faith and his own knowledge and he must go and start making deep investigations on the reality of Hashem in the world. And that is the main wisdom and knowledge that a person should buy in life. To know Hashem. If now it's the day, and I'll show you something, a, a, a bottle, a pen. Okay, that's a pen. Do you need faith for that, to believe me that that's a pen? It's simple, that's a pen. Everyone knows it's a pen. Why do you know that it's a pen? Because there is light, and you can see with your eyes that it's a pen. But if now I'm going to tell you that it's unique. Why? Because the color that it will paint in, that I will write in, is purple, is yellow, is green. Can you know that I'm saying the truth? Or that you need to believe me? You need to believe. Why? Because the light cannot show it. It's undercover. It's still hidden from your eyes. If I'll make a line on a blank paper, you're going to see it. Easy. Yes, I know. To know things, you use the light. If you want to know something, you need the light. The light is opening your eyes to see and to know what that you know. But the faith is in the night. The faith is in the darkness. To know that there is Hashem, if a person learned enough Torah, he can know that there is Hashem. But to believe in Hashem, even if you finished all Shas, all Talmud, seven times in your life, it will not going to bring you to complete faith. And you can see it in the world. You can see that even religious, very frum people, people that learn Torah for years and years, and they're far from faith. They're far from that simple faith to believe that it's all good, that Hashem is with you, that Hashem for sure is going to help you. Those are tests that a person can learn only in darkness. That wisdom to believe in Hashem, to see Hashem through darkness, to recognize Him even when He's hiding His face, 
not to move away from him, even when he's showing to you like that he's not there. This is something that only a person that went through very hard times in darkness can achieve. And this is why we must be happy with ourselves. Because the fact that we are in darkness, that we are confused, that we forget what that we learned, learned yesterday, the fact that we don't know so many rules and we don't have so many understandings and that we're so far from knowing how to keep the Torah and we cannot find the power and the tools and, and the knowledge of how to do it and we're doing it wrong and we're seeing ourselves failing again and again and falling over and over. The fact that we see ourselves so far doesn't mean that we are really far from Hashem. We are far maybe from keeping certain obligations that the Torah is commanding us to keep. Yes, if you're not washing your hands in the morning, so you are not washing your hands in the morning. If you're not praying in the minyan, you're not praying in the minyan. If you're not putting tefillin, you're not putting tefillin. Great! But it doesn't mean that Hashem is not with you. The faith is in the nights. You can be as far as you can from the light, but Hashem is still over there with you in the dark places. And He's always there with you, even in the valley of death. Even in rock bottom of hell, Hashem in Barach is with you. Because Hashem created the world in a way that the world contains Him. That He is holding the world and He is inside the world as well. He is also outside wrapping and surrounding all worlds. And also there is no place in the creation that is empty from His presence. Hashem in Barach is inside every vessel, inside every drawer, inside every cabin, inside every box, inside every shoe. Inside every place Hashem in Barach is in. And to experience, to feel Him, it depends on your faith. In how much you believe that Hashem in Barach is walking with you inside your shoes. That Hashem in Barach is with you in the darkest hours. This is a thing that depends in your faith, and the faith is in the nights. So if a person really wants to buy faith, if a person really wants to become a believer, he needs to focus, to set his mind, to remind himself over and over, Hashem is with me. Hashem is close to me. Hashem he loves me. Hashem he cares about me. Hashem will not gonna leave me alone. Hashem will be there for me. Hashem will support me. Like that Hashem answered to my prayer that time. Hashem will answer me again. And to remind himself the fact that Hashem took us out of Egypt and that Hashem in Barach saved you from that police officer and that Hashem in Barach gave you the money to pay rent last month and that Hashem in Barach will help you to pay the same next month. And even twice as much if you will need it. Because Hashem in Barach, He's got all the powers. And He's close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So the only thing that we must do is to call Him with truth. To call Him with truth, it's not to call Him by the combinations that are written in the books of the Arya Kadosh, by the secret of the Kabbalah. No, it might be not the truth for your level. If you don't know what that book is talking about, so it's not your language. It's not the truth. You cannot express your heart while learning or praying by the intentions of the of 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 of, of the Rashash Hakadosh in the Sidur that he wrote with Kabanot Harashash. If you don't understand what that's written over there, you cannot pray with those intentions. It will be a fake. It will be a lie. And a person that is lying to Hashem cannot stand in front of Hashem. So it's a problem. So what should you do? You should pray. How you should pray? From your heart. What it means, means you should, you should be honest. That you should talk about the things that really bothers you. That you should really open your heart and share and tell and talk with Hashem about whatever you go through in your life. And even if you're finding yourself that the most important thing in your life is that your team will win the Super Bowl this year, you need to talk about it with Hashem and there is no problem with it. Because really, if you're going to call Hashem 
from that place that you're holding, Hashem will answer you. Hashem will reveal His godliness, His greatness to you because you prayed, because you called Him from your heart. How amazing it is to see your child playing with, the, with Lego, with whatever, trucks, and for one second he will pray, please Hashem, help me. And he's playing superheroes, and he's somewhere else. But as, while he's playing those simple games, He's bringing Hashem into the picture. How proud you're going to be. How happy you're going to be to see that your child, he's got faith, and he's pulling that faith into his life. That's a success of a parent. To see that his children believe in Hashem, that Hashem is with them even while playing. So, if you find yourself that you're like that little kid, that you're so far from praying now to Hashem, from learning Torah now, but it doesn't matter. If your heart is aimed to Hashem, so Hashem can reveal His kindness to you and to help you. It depends in faith. It depends in prayers. Because prayers, like we said, is the way that you express your faith. When you believe that Hashem can help you, you pray. Why you don't pray? Because you don't have faith. You don't have faith that Hashem can answer your prayers. Or you don't have faith in yourself that you are worthy that Hashem will answer your prayer. You don't have faith that Hashem loves you. Or maybe you think about yourself some things that are shaking the connection between you to Him. But it's not Hashem's fault. Hashem was always there. Just that we felt that place of lack of faith. And we're not counting on Him enough. The only way that we're going to bring Him back to be with us, to show His mercy, to show His love, is if we're going to count on Him and going to ask from the heart with prayers of truth, please Hashem, reveal your kindness. Have mercy on a person like me. Even though that I'm so low, even though that I'm so far, even though that I'm asking for nonsense Hashem, but I cannot sleep. But I cannot eat, I lost my appetite, I cannot sleep, I cannot think right. Until I'm going to pay the rent, until I'm going to do this, until I'm going to have a profession in my head, something. Okay, I know I'm lack of confidence. Okay, Hashem, I know I'm lack of faith. Until I'm going to get married, I can't be happy. Until I'm going to have children, Hashem, I can't be happy. Those prayers that will come out from your mouth, have the potential, the highest potential to be answered because they're coming from an honest place. And all the reason why Hashem Bach is putting us in those tests, it's only to bring us to that understanding that there is no one else except of Him that can redeem us, that can give us that salvation that we're yearning for, that we're so thirsty to, to receive. The reason why Hashem Barach is hiding His face from us is only to increase our desire for Him. Like a spark that you see in the darkness and you want that spark, you need that light. And if it's going to disappear, you're not going to fall to despair. You're not going to give up. You're going to start running because you already saw something. You were stuck in darkness. You were stuck in the middle of the forest. Suddenly you see some bright light between the trees. You're going to start going forward that light. But if that light suddenly going to disappear, you're going to stop? Or that you're going to count on your old memory, on the, sort of the, the, the direction, more or less, and you're going to try, you're going to start running. Why? Because you lost the light. That's why Hashem Barach is hiding His light from us. He's not completely hiding His light from us. He's revealing His light and then hiding it. Revealing it and then hiding it again. Only because that through that way, only in that approach, only by that kind of supervision, our will will just grow and get stronger and stronger for us to go and achieve Him and call Him. So you will be answered on some things, but on other things you will not going to be answered. So, the fact that you've been answered on those things, on those small miracles that you experienced until now, it will give you the push, the will to pray on bigger things, on more important things. Also, the fact that you will succeed will affect others. The fact that you achieved something and you're going to go and tell other people on your success, People will be inspired by that. 
So we must go and spread that faith, have to go and share that light between people because we don't know who will wake up and what will be the result of one short conversation, one short video clip that you send, inspiring video that you send to that person can change the life of thousands of other people and you will never know. There was one person that donated to our um, organization. He donated $5,000 and he asked to use that donation only for advertisement on Facebook. That's what he asked. He asked us to use that donation only for advertising on Facebook. We had to respect his request and we invested all of that amount, $5,000, in one video that we posted on Facebook. We chose a very good video, a very inspiring part, and we put it on Facebook with that boost of $5,000 to post that. We reached over 20 million people with that video. $5,000 donation, more than 20 million people received that post. Can you understand the numbers? So, you send one video to one person, and that person woke up and decided, you know what, I'm going to donate to that website. I'm going to support that organization. And that organization is going to work like crazy to fulfill the request of that weird donor. Okay, we're with you. And he donated. And it's because of you that he donated, right? Because you sent him the first post. You sent him the first clip. And he was very happy. He been inspired by that video. And he put $5,000 it's not coming out of your pocket. You must do that. You must share. You must send those videos. And then that person reached out through us to more than 20 million people. Can you understand the number? And it's true. It's a lot of help from heaven that that video went so viral and went so far. But still, you can never know what one word, one act, one charity, one good thing that you're going to do, how much it will push the, the process of redemption for further. How many big, huge things you can achieve. You can talk for two minutes with a person without knowing even his issues, and you're just going to smile to him. You're just going to tell him, I love you, I care about you, I really want to help you. If you're going to say those simple words from an honest place in your heart, and you will be honest with him, it might be that you saved his life. Because you don't know where is he holding you don't know what he's doing. I met once a person that told me that his life been saved by a person that gave him a CD of a Torah class. And he, when he received that CD, he didn't listen to it. He put it in one of his drawers and only one year and a half after, he was in a huge crisis and he wanted to put an end to his life. And he was sitting alone in his room and he opened that drawer and he saw suddenly that city. And he decided to put that city because of the despair. And you, the one that gave him that city, don't remember him and don't remember that city and don't know what you did. And if you would meet him after two weeks and you would ask him, okay, you heard the city I gave you, he would say no. And you would be so disappointed. And you think that you lost and that that person doesn't care about the Torah. And you would have thoughts about him. And you don't know that Hashem Barach is planning everything in such a precise way. Such an incredible supervision to wait until the right moment that the seed will catch and then will grow. And we cannot plan those things. Only Hashem can plan those things for us. So we must put all of our confidence on Him. To count on Him in 100%. 100% confidence on Him. To count on Him to know that He is running our lives. Even if you haven't paid your debt yet. Even if you haven't went to that test yet. Even if you failed in that situation. You don't know what Hashem is planning. Where are you going to find that door? When are you going to find that opportunity? How the treasure will come to you? What's going to make you really happy? You think that that car, that that house, you think that you finish Shas and learning all the Gemara, you think, but you think too much. 
You need to try to let Hashem Yitbarach think for you. You can pray, Hashem, I want to be happy. Hashem, I want to succeed. Hashem, I want to satisfy you. I want to feel satisfied. I want to feel satisfaction from life. I want to have a purpose. But to tell Hashem Yitbarach how to save you, how to redeem you, what exactly you need, it's not true. If you found something that you want, you can pray for that thing. I'm not saying don't pray for certain things. You can pray for whatever you want. But when we are trying to learn how to come closer to Hashem, we must let Hashem Yitbarach lead us. We must let Hashem Yitbarach take us to that path, to, through that journey, that He, the only one that knows that path, when the boat is sailing in the sea, you cannot see the way, you cannot see the road. Only behind the boat you can see the track. Only behind. You cannot know the way that Hashem is taking you. And you can ask, Hashem, I want to do the best. And you, in your mind, are going to think, okay, I need to move to Israel. I need to learn Torah. But Hashem Yitbarach has got another thing that is so important. And not only to you. He wants you to open a business. And you never thought about opening a business in the U.S. Oh no, now I'm going to have to, to um, delay my trip to Israel and what I'm going to do and the holidays and Rosh Hashanah, I wanted to be in Uman. And Hashem Yitbarach, He sees your sorrow, He sees your pain, but you still don't know what's going to happen in that business that you're going to open. And I'm not telling you that you're going to be so rich from that business. Probably after one year or two, you're going to close that business. But the number of customers that will come to that business and will receive your smile and your effort of being nice and succeed because you cannot be happy and smiling to people just like that. So you need to have a reason to smile. So Hashem must stuck you in a store with a business that depends on the fact that you're going to smile to your customers and now you're going to smile to everyone and you're going to be super nice and you're going to offer them whatever they need and you're going to be amazing, amazing. And while you're doing that, you're going to save so many lives. And you're going to bring some workers to work under you and for days and weeks and months you're going to talk to them about your faith about the challenges that you're going through in life and you're going to build their faith with no intention, without knowing even what you're about to do and which amazing change you're about to cause in their lives. And you're not aware of that and you wouldn't choose it in the world because you have that desire to go to the Holy Land and it's great. But Hashem wants to give you something even bigger than that. And to save lives of people, it's even bigger and greater than to live in the Holy Land and learn Torah 24 hours a day. Because as long as there are people that are drowning in the sea, so the Mishnah, the Gemara is saying that the person that is not closing the book, the Bible, the Gemara, the Mishnah, and going and saving that drowning person, so that person is Chassid Shoteh. He is acting foolish. To learn Torah while people are drowning in front of your eyes, it's foolish. It's wrong. The person now is dying. What are you going to do? You must jump and save him and do as much as you can. So Hashem in Barach, He knows how important it is that you're going to save lives of people. That you're going to cheer up people. That you're going to support people. That you're going to open and illuminate the eyes of people that are looking for Him. And without you, they will never going to wake up. Because you have the same slang, you have the same accent, you have that look. Something in you is communicating with those lost souls that Hashem Barach is waiting and can't wait anymore. That they're going to wake up and going to come back to Him. And it all depends in you. And you're not aware to it. And if you would be aware to it, you would fail, for sure. Because you would be so proud and arrogant to think that you are something, that you're saving lives of people. So Hashem must block your eyes from understanding the greatness of those gifts that He's providing you with, that He's giving you, that He's offering you. And the way to know how to achieve all of those amazing things that Hashem is offering us is only by closing our eyes and counting on Him, that He is the one that is leading us, 
that one hour before you go with that ticket to the Holy Land, someone will talk to you and you're going to hear that words of truth just being heard to your ears from His mouth and you're going to say, you know what? I'm not going. And to take that brave decision and to follow the truth is much greater than to live in the Holy Land, to live in Jerusalem, to pray every day in the earliest minyan in the Western Wall. I promise to you that to listen to the voice of Hashem and to do whatever He commands you to do is much greater than to wake up midnight and to spend all night long in the Western Wall and to pray Shacharit over there and then to go and learn in Beit Midrash until 6 p.m. and then to go eat your first meal of the day and to go to sleep to wake up midnight it's so much tinier than to listen to the voice of Hashem. To listen to the voice of Hashem it's to listen to your inner voice to the positive voice that is calling you from inside to be honest, to be truthful, to be loyal, to be nice, to be kind, to care, to love, to support, to build, to listen, to hug, to kiss, to think how I can help, what I can do, what Hashem you want from me, how can I help that person? That is much, much greater and to function by the rules and by the book and by what other I don't know who told you and guide you because you are unique and you have your own channel that is connecting you from inside to the source of life to infinity to Hashem himself and you are connected to him so you must enjoy and use that connection you must let him express his godliness through your unique soul and to reveal His light through you, in your shade, with your voice, through your talents, and your power, and your treasures, the spiritual qualities that Hashem gave you, that He built and created and designed you in a certain shape that is perfect by His wisdom, to reveal His light through you. And if you would be different, it wouldn't be perfect. Only when you are who that He made you to be, that's perfect. Because He is the one that knows all. And He is the one that knows exactly what is important and what is required and what is needed and what is must to be done and to happen. And He's doing it through you. And it can be sometimes not pleasant, and it can be sometimes not nice, and it can be sometimes so embarrassing, and it can be horrible, only because we don't realize that it's Him doing with us whatever He's doing. I'm asking you. Me? No. In English when you say you, so it's plural. So... No one wants to be abused. No one wants to be hurt. No one in the world wants to be raped. No one. There is no person that will want something so awful to happen to him in his life. But when Esther Hamalka, she found herself in a situation that her nation was all about to be killed. To be erased. So she decided to go and to be forced to be raped by that evil king that was cruel and vicious and was threatening the lives of everyone and also his ex-wife. He executed her and she sent herself to be raped and to suffer because she had a purpose for that. What was the purpose? To save a whole nation. Ya'el eshet chever akini, another woman that did the same. That when she saw that her nation is in problem, and that the Beit Mikdash and all the, the wall that protect the city is about to break, 
and soldiers are about to come and to kill and slaughter everyone alive. So she decided to go in the middle of the night, out from the city, into the camp of the soldiers' enemy, and to look for their commander. And to... You did, I'm sorry. Also, Ya'el Ashad Khabar Akinish is going to say with Sisa, I'm sorry. That was you did. it. You're right, thank you. But Ya'el Ashad Khabar Akinish, similar story. Thank you. You did. And she went and she allowed herself to be raped in that situation and to be forced to do things against her religion. Why? Because she had a purpose. And Ya'el Ashad Khabar Akinish, she did the same. Why? Because they had a purpose. So no one wants to suffer, but when there is a purpose to what that you go through in life, so then you don't care even to go through hell, to go through the worst sorrow. The most painful pain in the world for you is worthy. Why? Because you have a purpose. So when we will have a strong purpose in life, so we're not going to care so much when we're going to complete our Aliyah. And if we finished all Shas or haven't, or if we pray today in the Minyan or haven't, and not that it's all not important, it's super important. It's the best thing in the world when you have the ability to do it and people are not drowning around you. But when people are drowning, when we are under attack and we're inside the war, a spiritual war of darkness trying to overpower on the souls that are connecting themselves to the light, if it's the souls of Israel, if it's the holy souls of the nations that are desiring to know the truth, truth, and they're converting, or they become Noahides or whatever, and they're just seeking and wanting the truth, all of those souls are under attack 24-7. 24 hours a day, those souls are dealing with challenges, with difficulties, and are about to lose their faith, about to lose their joy, their satisfaction, their happiness. And it's a war. And we must put ourselves as soldiers to go and to protect the generation, to do as much as we can for those individual souls and to protect them and to provide the right tools for them to succeed in their battle, in their war. So even to open that store, even to open that business, even to go in that opposite direction to what did you assume, to what did you been guided that that's the right way, even 100 degrees positive, that's the right way. Because Hashem will walk with you even to the valley of death, even to the darkest places of them all, and He will support you over there. And He will answer your prayers over there. And He will rescue. He took us down to Egypt, and He took us back. He redeemed us from Egypt as well. It's only depending one thing, in what that is in our hands, the free choice. Always to choose, always to want Him. Always to choose to come closer to Him and to call Him from our heart. And to talk to Him on daily basis. Every day to open our hearts and to speak and to share and to talk and to ask and to beg and to praise and to thank and to apologize and to confess. To hold the faith in our hands. That's the gift that we received from our ancestors. The faith, the way to express our faith is through prayer, to pray, to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. And prayers of truth will be answered because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So we just need to be honest and to offer that honesty and that simple faith to everyone we know, even to those ones that care only about money, also to those ones that care only about sports, tell them there is a Creator, you can talk to Him about your issues. Talk to Hashem, talk to the Creator, talk to Father in Heaven, talk to the universe, talk to the light, talk to the cosmos, talk to whoever you want to, just talk. With that advice you can save lives of people and we can save our own lives. 
that Hashem will open our eyes to see Him, to recognize Him, and to count on Him with a happy heart and a wishing soul. Amen. Can be a soul. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.